everyone, it's Stephanie Weaver here in the Blue and Yellow Kitchen. I'm here with Microwave Boy on the camera and Daisy May, the whiny golden retriever who's wandering around on the floor. Uh, we don't have a live guest today. Uh, the book we're featuring is Ama, a Tex-Mex cookbook. It's written by Chef Joseph Santino, who's based in Los Angeles, and his partner Betty Halleck. Uh, the reason that Chef Santino is not here is because he runs four restaurants, and it's really busy right now. <laughs> Uh, they, it looks like all those restaurants are still open, which is amazing and awesome. Uh, they're all open for takeout. So if you're in the LA area, um, his restaurants are Baco Mercat, Bar Ama, Amasita, and Orso in Winston, which by the way, has a Michelin star. So kudos to Chef, <laughs> to chef for that. So this is his labor of love, his Tex-Mex cookbook. He is of Tex-Mex heritage and it's full of his family stories and his family recipes. And so we're gonna be making a Tex-Mex Caesar salad today. I've got some olive oil warmed up on the stove here and we're gonna put um, four to six anchovies. So I like to buy anchovies in um, packed in olive oil in a jar. And the reason for that is you usually only use four to six of them in a recipe. So if you open a whole tin, then you kind of have to eat the anchovies pretty quickly. And there's such a specific flavor and taste that, um, you know, you kind of want them in very small doses. And I'm not sure that was quite warm enough, so I'm just going to turn up a little bit. You want them to sizzle just a bit. You're not trying to fry them. What you're looking for is for these anchovies to actually melt into the oil. So as you start to cook, and cook them, they start to cook down. Anchovies are very salty. So if you're watching your sodium like me, you might only want to use four. I ended up just throwing five in there because that's what came out of the jar. Um, but this way then I can, you know, close up the jar, put it back in the fridge, and then the next time I need anchovies, which might not be, you know, for a month or more, um, I'm good to go with anchovies. So they add an incredible umami kind of punch. I'll put the jar right there so you can see it if you want. And then we're also going to put the three cloves of garlic in with the oil to flavor the oil. Now, Normally, I would be smashing and mincing these, but for salad dressing, I actually like to use a garlic press. Now, these are super fat, <laughs> fabulous uh, cloves of garlic. Yours may not always look like that. Mine usually don't. These were sent to me by my friends at Melissa's Produce for another recipe that I'm making soon. The reason I like to use a garlic press for salad dressing is because you get very fine garlic uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, smashed, I guess, Does it, you know, kind of shredded. I'm not even sure what it would be called, but uh, if, you know, if you're whisking it into a salad dressing, you, you want the smallest possible pieces. And these cloves are so big, I might just use two because they're pretty big. So I, I, you know, you can cut them in half if you need to to get them in the press. You can start to hear the sizzle. I'll bring the pan over in a minute so you can see it. So what we're doing is we're dissolving, kind of dissolving the anchovies in this oil. We're cooking the garlic a little bit. You want to watch the garlic to make sure it doesn't burn. Like I said, I may just do one and a half because these are so big. Ooh. It's very satisfying. I'm not sure why, but I, I find using the the garlic press to be very satisfying. All right, so now I gotta keep an eye on it because I don't want anything to burn over here. Whoa, okay. Watch out, Daisy, back up. Okay, so that's a lot of oil. You really wanna watch your temperature. But what you're looking for, so I'm starting to see the garlic getting golden and I'm, wa I'm wanting these anchovies to kind of break down. So you don't want it to be too hot you don't, like I said, you're not trying to fry them. You just really want them to start to, they start to just kind of dissolve. And that's what you want is you want these, um, and I'm going to, I'll bring this over and show you in just a second. Okay, I can do it now. So, I'll this out this spot for me to hold it there, my quick one. So you can still see these are still pretty whole, but that some of them have broken down into pieces. Chachi. So some, something fell on the floor. <laughs> we can't figure out what because we clean the floor all the time. But 
and, and she also, as I've mentioned in earlier shows, she really just lays around until she knows we're filming, and then for some reason, that gets her all I was beginning up. to think it's the food. Yeah, well, it could be the food, yeah, because she knows that we're cooking. Um, Mommy is not as good about giving treats from the kitchen as Daddy is, so. Uh, all right, so I think I'm going to let that, I think I can break that down a little bit more after it cools. So I'm going to turn that off, do the rest of the dressing. Uh, so what we've got for the rest of the dressing is mayo, Worcestershire sauce, Dijon mustard. So we're going to start mixing that together. And I'm on a low sodium diet, and I'm also generally gluten free. I try not to eat a lot of dairy. This is definitely not a migraine friendly recipe because there's a whole bunch of migraine triggers in here. All delicious, of course. Um, so, you know, what, what, but what we've learned, what I've learned since in the five or six years since I was diagnosed is kind of how much of certain things I can tolerate. So that's the start of the dressing. I'm going to zest a lime. And so let's talk for a minute as I'm zesting about Caesar salad. So if everybody probably has had Caesar salad at some point. Who is Caesar? Yeah, so he's, who is Caesar? So um, he's actually local, was local to this area. So he lived in, he is an Italian immigrant named Caesar Card Cesar Cardini. He lived in San Diego, and at the time, the border was uh, very porous, meaning you could just go back and forth very easily, like it should be now, um, but that's an aside. Um, and he had a restaurant called Caesars in Tijuana, which is right on the other side of our border here. And so the, the lore is that um, he was running low, it was 1924, they were running low on supplies, and he kind of didn't have a lot in the kitchen. He came out with what he had, which was, you know, some anchovies, some parmesan, an egg yolk, some romaine, and he mixed up everything table side and made this big show of it, and that became the Caesar salad. Now, over the years, other people have claimed to have invented it who worked at the restaurant, other restaurateurs, but it seems like it was probably that particular guy in Tijuana. So, um, so hats off to Cesar Cardini for coming up with this classic, uh, classic. So normally what's in a Caesar salad, it's a anchovy dressing, romaine lettuce, uh, it's Toss, kind of it's a thicker dressing so it really clings to the leaves of the romaine and then you've got parmesan maybe some anchovies Cesar Cardini only had Worcestershire sauce in his he was not a pro anchovy person but it just kind of depends and then toasted crouton so you could see if you're a restaurant owner and you had stale bread you're using up some of the product that you had right and so that makes sense so these are special croutons um, I made them last night because it's summer here, and so um, it was kind of warm. So I toasted, so he calls for sourdough bread torn into pieces. So we had sourdough English muffins, so close enough. And so I mixed olive oil, um, fresh thyme, fresh oregano, sorry, fresh thyme, fresh oregano, uh, chili powder, and um, a garlic clove, I feel like there's something else. Eh, I think that might be it. And um, and then you kind of toss the bread with that. Oh, and then you grate some cotilla cheese over the top, and then toast them in the oven for tw 12 to 15 minutes. So you've got these really nice crunchy croutons that have a bit of a spice kick, which is really nice. We've also got for the salad some more cotilla cheese and some queso fresco. So this, these are two classic Mexican cheeses. This is a fresh cheese. The cotilla has been aged. And it's named for Cotilla de la Paz in Michoacan, the city of Michoacan in Mexico. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much our ingredients here. Just gonna try to keep the end of the lime out of the dressing. So we got our lime juice and I'm gonna move a couple things out of the way. All right, and then we've got some more chili powder in the dressing. So again, there's a, some really nice, you know, kind of kick to this. And then about two tablespoons of cilantro, kind of minced up. All right, 
right, and then he calls for a small amount of the grated cotilla in the dressing and then the rest in the salad. All right, I think we're good. So I'm just gonna mix this together and then we're gonna add in our oil, our warm oil with the anchovies, which will not too hot. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. And then at this point, I'm gonna taste it and see if to my taste it needs any salt. I'm definitely gonna add some freshly ground black pepper. Um, but because the anchovies are really salty and there's salted cheese in there, I'm probably not gonna add any additional salt, but I will do it. So this is your dressing right here. This is the dressing, right. So um, now I'm probably supposed to be actually whisking it with a whisk. I am not whisking it with a whisk. But you can see this really nice color from the chili mixture, chili spice powder. You can see the little green from the cilantro. So is it supposed to be a little bit liquidy? Or? Yeah, so it's, it's supposed to just be thin enough to cling to the leaves. And um, I'm not even, I think the anchovies probably have broken down, so you kind of want that anchovy, um, you know, umami hit all the way through. Mmm. Wow. So much flavor. Um, I'm tasting the citrus, the lime. It's kind of the first hit. Not super spicy. Don't taste, it doesn't taste like fish or anchovies, but it has that rich kind of umami kick. It's creamy from the mayo. That's delicious. Okay, so we can finish up our salad. So the other tip I wanted to give you was that uh, you should only make the salads for as many people are gonna eat salad right then. So um, I'm just making salad for one. So salad for one for me is four yeah, four or five at the most um, romaine leaves. And I. this is my favorite. I love using the scissors in the kitchen. I don't know what it is. It just, it's really satisfying. You don't have to have a separate knife. You don't have to have a separate cutting board. And I really like, and he might call for the romaine to be torn. I really like romaine cut in ribbons. I'm not sure what it is about the ribbons that just makes me happy but it really does if you don't have romaine is there a suggestion oh so that's a good question so classic caesar is with romaine but um yeah i would say a spring mix would be fine maybe something with a little bit of bitterness so something maybe with a little bit of radicchio or something in it could be nice um, or an herb salad mix might have some additional you know kind of flavor so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to do kind of like, all right, so how would I do this? Don't forget the avocado. Okay, so how do you know if an avocado is ripe? Well, the skin on this still feels thin and flexible. Um, there's usually a little piece of the stem that I call the button that has fallen off. As soon as it falls off, the avocado is ripe. And there should be a small amount of give, but not a lot. Now, I, I bought this yesterday, and I'm really hoping that it's right for this, but I think it is, it feels good. So you cut it down the middle, then twist to open. The pit stays in there really nicely. The other thing to note is that tiny little avocados, the pit is proportional. So you're gonna get still a really nice serving of, uh, of avocado, even if it's a small, um, even if it's a small avocado, because the pit will be small as well. So it shouldn't be too smushy or too... Yeah, you or... don't want it too soft. You don't want it real black because that means, you know, unless you're making guacamole that day, uh, and even then you might have some that you're going to have to get rid of. And so what I'd like to do with avocados is um, really keep an eye on them in a bowl on the counter, and then as soon as they start getting soft, just start to, to, to get to this point, put them in the fridge because that slows the process down. And if they're ripe, so if it if the, the peel should peel off all in one piece, and you can tell if it's a little bit past perfect if, if the peel starts to break. So this is, I mean, this, this avocado would be great to eat, but it might have been like perfect in terms of peeling it yesterday. 
And then the nice thing is that when you peel it, if you're able to do this, if there are any bad pore spots, they will usually stick to the peel. So you just end up with, um, you know, with the good stuff in your hand. And then, you know, for myself, I probably will eat a whole half of an avocado as my salad, because uh, that's kind of the real, you know, heft of the salad. And so what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of dressing in here. I'm trying to not use something I already tasted with. I should put out a couple more tasting spoons. And then I'm gonna toss with some nice tongs. And what you're looking for is just to lightly coat. You so just want to lightly coat. it coat. first and then the croutons. Yes, and then the okay. croutons and then the cheese, right? Because so okay. you, you want, but the thing is like, if I put this in the fridge, this lettuce is gonna to start to break down because of the action of the salad dressing. So I only want to make enough for one person. I'm gonna add some pepper right onto it because that'll stick really nicely now and I'll taste it more. So if you're taking this to a picnic, you're not gonna dress it until you get- Correct, you would put the dressing in its own little container. Um, I would put the cheeses, you could mix them together if you want, I'd maybe keep the cheeses separately because there might be people who are dairy free, which this would be fine for if you're dairy free. And then, you know, a couple of croutons on top. Maybe toss these guys in. Now, I normally don't eat gluten, so I do need to know, you're like, those of you who follow me for a long time know, you're like, why is she eating real, real bread? Um, I occasionally will have a tiny bit of real bread because it's delicious and it doesn't bother me too much if I have a small amount. Um, and I do kind of want to get the, the taste of you know, I try not to mess with chef's recipes too much unless I just, you know, can't have that item, you know. And so, let me just show off how pretty that looks. So, beautiful, huh? I'm super excited. And so the idea is you've got the creaminess off the avocado, that bright kind of peppery, umami taste. Uh, of the dressing with the get a bite of the and then the little bit of cheese. Mm. And the crunch of the crouton, which is really good. It's delicious. What I love about his book, sorry, what I love about his book which is very beautiful. So um, the photographs are by Ben Fuller. So good job, Ben Fuller. Let me just show you how beautifully this, this simple salad was photographed. I mean, isn't that gorgeous? Can you tilt it a little bit more? That way? way? Yeah. There, that's it. Yeah, that? okay, yeah. yeah. It's always tricky to get the right angle on this. So absolutely beautiful photographs. There's all these great stories about his, and photos of his family. Um, let me see if I can find a, family picture. Uh, I'm quick here, sorry. Well, that's not quick at all. All right, well, let me just show you. It's a big book. It's a big book. And it was one I bought, you know, for myself as a gift to help support our local bookstore. I'd seen it in the store and kept thinking about it and thinking about it and finally decided I was gonna splurge and um, so it's just very beautiful. If you're in Los Angeles, um, I encourage you to check out um, Bacro Mercad, Bar Ama, Amasita, or Orso and Winston. They are all offering patio and takeout service. So let's try to support our restaurants if they're in our area. And you can follow Chef, who is uh, really, um, sounds like a fascinating person because he also does some kind of artisanal dyeing as well. He is on Instagram, so Chef Joseph Centeno. And you can follow me at Sweet Room PH. So you'll see this on Facebook, watch, and Instagram TV, IGTV. And we look forward to seeing you again in the Blue and Yellow Kitchen. Thanks for being here. Bye.